Hi St Simons, it's great to be coming together. This is our last online service, our last YouTube service. I want to thank Danny Pryor, who's actually speaking today. He's doing the last of the talks on the Psalm series now that August is finishing up. And I hope he doesn't edit this bit out. He has edited for five and a half months now these YouTube services, which have served to bring us all together. It's exposed lots of new talent. And just, I think, been something for us to hold on to in the time of pandemic. And I'm just so very grateful. Because next Sunday, we're going to be coming back together at 10.30 for an all age. It's going to be shorter. We all need to wear masks. We'll all have a temperature taken at the start. So don't come if you've got a temperature that's higher than normal. But we're looking forward to being together. We'll still have videos and different things going out at different points. And we'll continue doing some teaching videos because the talks are going to have to be much shorter than usual here on Sundays at 10.30. And also Hour of Power for Children will start on Sunday the 13th because next week we'll all come together just for something. But we look forward to it very much indeed, even if there's no tea and coffee and chat afterwards and we have to all leave early. It's going to be great to be together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these times, these services which have been digital but have drawn us towards each other and helped us to worship you even though it hasn't been in our usual space. How we look forward to next week, what we are enjoying today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. When darkness deepens the path on shore the sun is hidden by the storm. I look to heaven and cry to thee, O oh God, be here. When darkness deepens, the path unsure, the sun is hidden Right.
The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. How are you? Alex kicked us off at the start of this month of the Psalms by asking that question, how are you? And it's a question we can't take for granted over the last six, six months or so. And I've chosen Psalm 19 today to finish our month in the Psalms because it's spoken to me a number of specific ways it's spoken to me about dealing with this current situation and the uncertainty and the troubles that so many people are going through. Personally, it's been challenging to work from home my company has made a lot of cutbacks and many friends and long-term colleagues have lost their jobs. A number of close friends have had particularly heartbreaking personal challenges in recent months and faced the personal tragedy of losing loved ones to COVID and other um, terrible circumstances. My parents have been very unwell and we've largely had to watch from a distance rather than support them properly. My own children have faced the uncertainty of A-levels and GCSEs. And most importantly of all, obviously there was no sport for me to watch at all. But it feels like the bad news has carried on coming all year. And I think Psalm 19 speaks clearly into these troubled times. So just to give an overview, this is a psalm of David, and ironically, it's a song of praise to God. And there are three main parts to it that split pretty much equally through the psalm. Firstly, creation. Secondly, the word or the Bible. Thirdly, the grace of God. Some iconic kind of standout verses. The first verse of each section really sums it up in a sense. Verse one, the heavens declare 
the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And that section that goes from verse 1 to verse 6 talks of how creation glorifies God. And then verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And that section to verse 11 talks of how God's word is powerful and true and relevant. And then verse 12 to the end, in verse 12 it says, But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Forgive my hidden faults. We're flawed and we need God's grace and forgiveness. So I've been learning about applying that psalm to the situations I've been going through in the past few months. I've been learning to take time to appreciate all the good things God has made, despite these challenging times. I've been encouraged by the promises and the truth in his word. And I've learnt to check my privilege, to take stock of all the ways in which I have, perhaps without even noticing, slipped up, fallen back, given up on God. Those hidden faults are so easy to forget in ourselves and often so much easier to spot in others. So just to look at each one of those three areas briefly. Firstly, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And I've realised I'm really missing the outdoors. You may have guessed from the videos that I've been using in these online services that I really enjoy those scenic shots. In fact, I've really enjoyed looking for more. When I'm supposed to be working, I've been checking for more videos that might work. And I think it's because we'd normally be camping a lot at this time of year down by the river outside London or at New Wine, the Christian festival that we attend with so many others, past and present from St Simon's. Seeing the heavens sat out under the stars at night, escaping the tall streets and constrained views of London. It's a privilege to be able to do that. And it's one I'd not realised how much I valued until I had a Facebook rant a few weeks ago about holiday photos from my friends because I was stuck in London in a heatwave and this, rather embarrassingly, was what I wrote. Uh, maybe there's a point there, I think a few of you actually agree with me on it, but don't listen to me on Facebook, no one else does after all. Take time to appreciate the ways in which the world around you declares the glory of God. Not just nature, but the small things. The laugh of a child, the shape of a plant in the park, the taste of a good meal, as Andrew said a few weeks ago. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And it's not about worshipping nature or thinking that the countryside is much better than the city. Heaven is the city of God after all. But it's about looking for God in the things you value and you love. What declares the glory of God to you? Now more than ever, search for those things. Treasure them. Meditate on them. But perhaps don't post any photos to Facebook if it's a nice view in Sardinia. Secondly, the word of God. This section from verse 7 on. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Perfect, trustworthy, right, radiant, pure. I've been really struck by the way David talks about the law, the Bible, in this psalm. Is that how I react to it? Perfect, trustworthy, right, radiant, pure. Often it seems to be words more like challenging or tricky or obscure or difficult. It's easy to get tripped up by challenging parts of the Bible and forget the way in which it can nourish and feed you. Particularly now, I love singing, as you know probably, and meeting together as a community, and youth group, and praise peg, all those things that we've not been able to do much of. But we do have the word. 
I always remember the inscription my father put in the Bible I chose for my first birthday after I became a Christian in my early 20s. Here is treasure, dig deep. David expresses that reverence for the word of God in the Psalms. I'm reading through them at the moment. I try to do it once a year, a psalm a day. It's actually quite easy. I recommend it. And of course, the law or the word finds its fullest expression in Jesus Christ. We say he's the living word because he embodies and fulfills the word, the promises of the Bible. He is perfect, trustworthy, wise, right, radiant and pure. As it says in this psalm, it's one of those virtuous circles. As we spend more time reading the word, we are also drawing closer to Jesus, the living word. Relationships have been really tough, haven't they, the last few months? And one of the reasons is because we've not been able to see people. We make that mistake with Jesus, not spending time with him, reading the word, listening, just a few minutes a day. John Ryland often writes about repeating a short phrase um, or Bible verse, meditating over it, claiming it for your life. So don't just read the word. If it's perfect, trustworthy, wise, radiant, pure, right, then claim it for yourself. Claim its promises for you and your life. Personally, I've always found great power in the Jesus prayer of the Eastern Church tradition. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Repeating it several times at the start of a time of prayer as a way of meditating and focusing, slowing down. A Bible verse that speaks profoundly to you, or a piece of liturgy like that, can be an anchor, especially right now. So I've looked at creation, and I've looked at the way the world around us declares the glory of God. I've looked at the Word, and taking hold of it for our lives. And finally, the last section of Psalm 19, from verse 12 on. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. I've spoken before about David, this man close to God's heart, despite all the ways in which he sinned. We've heard about his adulterous and murderous sinfulness before. But what I've been really struck by in Psalm 19 is his understanding of hidden faults. Not just the great, obvious, willful sins. And that's what I want to focus on to finish. That phrase, hidden faults, could apply to our personality or character. That's just the way I am, take it or leave it, that sort of sense. But instead, David's saying that we need the humility to acknowledge that we can improve, that we should be better. And it could also apply to something that's really topical at the moment, unrecognised inherent bias around race or class or gender. And the last few months have made me personally understand much more about those hidden faults that I'm guilty of. Learning to check my privilege, understanding how much I've been given without even appreciating it, how much more I have than others simply because of the way I look, where I was born, the way I sound when I speak. And that's actually true for all of us at St Simons to a certain extent, at least compared to our friends at St Simons in India or in Delft and the other townships around Cape Town, or Sam, our former worship leader's friends in Beirut right now. Checking my privilege has helped me, particularly when I've struggled with the challenges of the past few months. Forgive my hidden faults. So Lord, forgive us our hidden faults, for the ones we don't really think about, but which sap our faith and our trust in you. Help us to focus on all the good that God has done in our lives and is still doing. Help us to recognise the glory of God in our lives so that we can declare as David does amazingly at the end of this psalm. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our rock, our sure foundation, through the truth of the Bible, 
a refuge in these times of trouble, just as he was for David, a physical refuge in the rocky hills of the countryside when he was being pursued by his enemies. Our rock and our redeemer through Jesus Christ. And what he has done for us, what he's done for those sins, hidden or willful, that would block us from relationship with him and block us from peace. David understands that he has nothing to lose and everything to gain by being open about his faults with God. Because God loves him regardless and knows already and is gracious to him and forgives him. Our good friend Jane Kirby has a fantastic blog, Rebel Heart, Rebel Girls, which is supposed to be for young women, but I find it inspirational too. And there's some inspirational posts on there, definitely. This is a recent one that she shared. Don't be blue. God is for you. If we, like David, can see a little bit more of the glory of God in his creation and can find a little bit more joy and revelation in his word, then I believe we will also be able to declare that God is for us, regardless of our faults and regardless of our situation. That the Lord is our rock and our redeemer, our sure foundation, whatever we go through, our rock and our salvation, regardless of what we do through Jesus Christ, our redeemer. Amen. And now let us pray to the Lord, our Father, with thanks and love in our hearts as the Jesus-centered family that we are. Holy Father, we thank you that you have chosen us through your grace and that there is nothing that we can do to earn your love, but that because of your nature and who you are as our Father, you give your love freely. Father, we thank you that through our personal relationship with you, your Holy Spirit reveals more of who you are and that through your word we can learn to be more like you, adopting the fruits of your Spirit and the nature of your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Lord, we pray for the leadership of countries around the world and ask that you would give them guidance that brings them into line with your plan for the world. We pray for the Queen and the Royal Family and we thank you that we have a monarch who actively chooses to have a strong Christian influence and guidance. Lord, we pray for Boris Johnson and all of his ministers and ask that you would guide them in their decision-making process to have the most positive outcome for everyone in our country. We also pray for the leadership of the worldwide church and ask that you would keep them all in constant step with your Holy Spirit in order for your church to be consistently relevant and active in their communities. Lord, we pray for the work of the church in all areas of the world, especially where there is conflict, deprivation and spiritual repression, that people will be guided through your Holy Spirit to those churches and missions that can provide them succor Father, we pray for the leadership of the Church of England, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York, and ask that you would fill them with your vision for the Church. Holy Father, we pray for St. Simon's Church and for Cameron. Lord, that as a church we would continue to grow and send people out into the wider community to spread your word and your work. And pray for Cameron that you would constantly be his strength and his guidance as he waits on you for his sermons and as he ministers to individuals. God bless him and fill him even more with compassion. Lord, we pray that all the community projects that St. Simon supports may resume in the near future. Lord, we know as just Jesus-centered family how important the church is in a community and pray that the church continues to show people how to live in love and faith as the spirit of Jesus shows us and as your word says love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength and second 
to love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, we would ask that in these difficult times we would not forget what we are and what we are about as Christians. As Colossians 3.16 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And Lord, as Zoom meetings persist, that we remember Matthew 18. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So, Holy Father, we pray, as your Son told us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, everybody, wasn't it great? That was the last of our online services. They have been fantastic. And I'm outside the doors because I hope you're going to come in next Sunday, if you're well, at 10.30. We're back to the Sunday services after our five and a half month break. I'm so excited. Do let's pray. Be praying about that service. It's the first time in so long and we're just putting it all together and thereafter. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.